Hello, Park family. This is Sean. Uh, we are studying the book of uh, Philippians, and this is actually a second class. Um, so we will be a, a little bit into the first chapter. Um, but uh, the first class that we were supposed to have recorded, um, uh, we thought we would, would be able to record through Zoom. And now the decision was made that we're just going to have these uh, recordings after the fact, after the class is over, and post it. So if people want to hop around between different classes, that they can. Um, the main thing that we want to remember about the book of Philippians is, number one, that it was written by Paul while he was in prison. And that, for especially for days for today's study, is going to be a very important piece of information. The other thing is that um, Philippi was very dear to Paul's heart. And if you look and compare um, Philippians to Ephesians or Galatians or even the Corinthian letters, you're going to see that Paul jumps on them for a couple things of things that they need to be aware of or be attentive to to try to change the way that they were doing things. Uh, but the Philippian church is just a letter of joy. It's a letter of love. It's a, uh, the relationship is strong. The church is strong. The group is strong. And he's encouraging them to just continue with what they're doing. So um, Philippi is not too far away from Rome. So there were a, a lot of people from Rome in Philippi and um, lots of patriots, lots of expatriates. So um, these are very faithful people, and um, they really jumped on to this, uh, this message of truth and hope of, about Jesus. So um, I'm going to go ahead and read our next section, say a couple things. It won't be incredibly long, but hopefully it'll be a good boost for you to get into the book of Philippians and study it a little bit deeper if that is your heart's desire. So we're going to pick up reading today in Philippians 1 in the 12th verse. Now, I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. Because my chains, most of the brothers in the Lord have been encouraged to speak the word of God more courageously and fearlessly. It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so in love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I am in chains. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. There's that word again. You're going to hear joy and rejoice frequently in this in this book. <clears throat> Now, if we go back to verse 12, uh, now I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. So basically what he's saying is what has happened to him has really um, made an impact on, his, on the way that he is sharing the gospel. So we can think about the Bible and where are some other times that this kind of attitude where the things that he has gone through or she has gone through has worked out for the good, worked out to share the gospel. And the story that we're going to point back to today is a story that's found in the book of Genesis in uh, chapter 50. And this is uh, Joseph as he comes to the end of that book. Joseph has been through quite a bit. He has been hated by his brothers sold into slavery, thrown into prison, uh, given the opportunity to interpret dreams. He was the project manager for the famine and somehow ended up second in command. At the very end of his life, his father passes away. And as his father passes away, his brothers became very afraid, thinking that, okay, this is it. This is where Joseph is going to actually uh, get his revenge on us. Um, and so we can pick up reading uh, Genesis 50 in verse 15. And it says this, When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, It may be that Joseph will hate us and pay us back for all the evil that we did to him. And so they sent a message to Joseph saying, Your father gave this command. 
before he died. Say to Joseph, please forgive the transgression of your brothers and their sin because they did evil to you. And now please forgive the transgression of your servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. His brothers also came and fell down before him and said, behold, we are your servants. But Joseph said to them, do not fear for I am in the place of God. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. So do not fear. I will provide for you and your little ones. Thus comforted them and spoke kindly to them. So here's jo Joseph looking back on his life. And he is saying, you know what, guys, what you intended to really harm, to do harm to me, um, has really set out to be a blessing from God. And if you look through the writings uh, of Genesis, you won't find a single negative word that has been recorded, spoken by Joseph. But he's got this attitude. And it's something that we can learn from in terms of looking at Philippians. Paul wasn't looking back on what had happened. Paul was in the middle of it. He was in the middle of a trial. He was in the middle of a jail cell. And he was telling them, man, you go forward. You know that this is, share, this is uh, helping in our ability to share the gospel. And um, we can look at this time of quarantine and we can say that, you know, it's inconvenient, it's difficult. We can focus on the negative side of it. If I can't go and do this, I can't go and do that. I'm stuck. Or you can try to see it through the eyes that um, Joseph did. I'm, I'm sorry, that Paul did. You can see it through the eyes of this is going to work to um, spread the gospel. And think of what's happening through the park. I believe the last time that Mitch uh, did his lesson, so last, last Sunday, we had over 2,000 people logged in to watch the, the presentation, to, to watch his lesson. And if you think two or three people per house, I mean, that is a lot of people. That is way more than any Sunday morning meeting we've ever had. So there's something going on here. So we have the opportunity to look at this in a positive light or a negative light. We can take uh, his attitude also. Um, when it says that uh, there were people that were, uh, and I'm sorry, that this is in verse 15. He says, if it's true that some pre preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill, the latter do so in love, knowing that I'm here, put there here for the defense of the gospel. What he's basically saying is that uh, there were people that were preaching the name of Jesus outside of the prison who were doing it only for the purpose of making it seem like the gospel is spreading so it's even more important to keep Paul in prison. So they were doing that so that Paul wouldn't be able to leave prison. And uh, people were also being encouraged. They were being encouraged by Paul's courageous life, his courageous decision to uh, continue to reach out to the palace, to the palace guards and to try to transform that the entire palace guard through the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. So if for some reason, and I in class today, I picked on Wendell Franklin. What if Wendell uh, got the Tulsa Police Department and he was like, I want you to throw everybody in jail that's saying anything about the gospel. Would that give you a sense that you need to run? Or would you hide? Or would you be bold with it? I thought, well, what if Jesus, uh, what if, Mitch was the first person to get thrown in prison. And we all said, holy cow, uh, I'm not totally sure what I've signed up for. You would have to make a decision. You would have to make a decision of how you were going to move next. Well, the people that were following Paul were like, let's go. This is it. This is our time to fly. And that's what we should be saying in this time of quarantine. We should be looking at this issue straight in the face of it and saying, God's going to be praised through this whole thing. God's message is going to be sent out across Tulsa, maybe even across 
the country, maybe around the world, all because people are taking advantage of the opportunity to share the gospel. And so he's, he is showing no ill will towards people that are doing negative things toward me, toward him. And I'm telling you, that's an attitude that I want to have. I want to be unwavering in my commitment to sharing the gospel. We read a couple more verses, and I'm going to read those, say something quickly, and then we'll be done for today. Yes, and I will continue to rejoice, for I know that your prayers and the help given by the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me, will turn out for my deliverance. Mitch gave an example of this today with John Haltham. John was like, I'm ready. I am ready to go. And what he's saying here, what Paul is saying here, here is whether he dies in prison or whether he gets out and gets to share the gospel, may God be praised. And folks, that's the kind of attitude that we need to have. We need to be ready to jump in to serving and representing Christ the way that he would want us to. So enjoy the rest of the study. And if you're going to try to get in with class next week, um, read the rest of the first chapter. And I told everybody, read the whole thing. Read all four chapters of, of Philippians and be blessed by it. And just realize that we are in a beautiful time. Take advantage of it. May God bless you today.